Hi everyone, welcome to the solution video for Workout Wednesday 2021 week two. This week I asked you if you could build a customer lifetime value matrix. As I said in the blog post, I wanted to keep this simple. This is one of those fundamental visualizations that everybody should know how to use. They have a lot of value. Let me go ahead and share um, the solution on Tableau Public. They have a lot of value because what you're basically doing is you're finding the date, and in this case, we're gonna be using the quarter. So the first quarter that somebody made a purchase, it could be any other habit or behavior you wanna track. And then you are basically normalizing across time how their age. And then you're able to compare uh, the entire value, so the total average spend of customers based on that cohort. So I would kind of consider this a, a cohort analysis because you're building out cohorts and then you can compare those cohorts over time. You'll see with Superstore, there's actually some interesting things here. First, I think for any thriving organization, you're always going to want to see the average customer lifetime value increasing over time. So it naturally makes sense that your oldest customer should have the most value if they are coming back and making repeat purchases. But there's also some other interesting things. So quarter two 2018 is kind of interesting because the lifetime value of customers uh, grew very quickly, much more quickly than any others. This is a good insight if you have some sort of marketing initiative or maybe another customer retention metric that happens, or if you start um, actively marketing or acquiring different types of customers, this can help demonstrate maybe some nuances or changes operationally or from a marketing perspective that might exist. Okay, so now that I've given the preface, we'll go ahead and get started. I will say I built this on Tableau 2020.3, but you should be able to build this in any version of Tableau that includes level of detail expression. So Tableau 10 moving forward. There's absolutely nothing else in here besides the use of table calculations and level of detail expressions that are used to facilitate this dashboard. Uh, the other statement I'll say is there's two versions of this, as I kind of said, and I'm going to build the basic one, which I've kind of listed below, and then we'll go through the advanced. So the Superstore data set uh, kind of has a pitfall, and, and that is that their customers don't purchase things that often. So there are a couple months where some of the customers within the certain cohorts, you can see one right here, quarter two of 2019, didn't make any additional purchases. So um, when we build this initially, you'll see that there's a gap right here. You'll see that there's another gap in quarter three, 2018. So I will end this video with showing the advanced solution of how to fill in those gaps so that basically you can see their customer lifetime value as it grows with, with an unbreakable value and you're not dependent on having data there. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring up Tableau Desktop. So like I said, I'm using Tableau uh, Desktop 2020.3 using the uh, save data source uh, sample superstore. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to build the acquisition quarter for the customer. And I'm defining this as the first quarter with which they made a purchase. So I'm going to fix it by the customer name and I'm going to find the minimum order date. And then we can um, further customize this by going ahead and um, truncating this. So the first, here, let me actually undo that. So we're now finding the minimum order date by a customer, but now we can truncate that further to the quarter of that. And then we will get the acquisition quarter and I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring on the customer name and I'm going to bring on the acquisition quarter so that you can see what that looks like. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring on their minimum order date because we just wanna kind of validate that this is working. So let's go through a couple. So Aaron Bergman, his first purchase was on 2-18-2017. If we roll that to the first quarter, we get 1-1-2017. That looks good. And let's go down a couple to Adam Belvan, so his first purchase was 9-18-2018. If we roll that back, we get 7-1-2019. So this is working perfectly. And so now we've got basically our customers in these individual cohorts. And that's the, the first section of the challenge is just getting that date. Uh, the next thing is, um, and let me go ahead and toggle back over to the browser, is this, this section at the top, this quarters since birth. So basically we're saying, you know, 
compared to the month that it is now, so Q1 2016, if we would say that this number here, the 615, is the average customer lifetime value for customers that were basically born or started their, their life in Q1 2016. So this accounts for all purchases in Q1 2016. This would be Q2 2016, Q3, and so on. So we're basically finding the difference in quarters between the their acquisition quarter or their quarter of birth, which is a common terminology to kind of say, and and the the current, you know, the quarter that it is. So this is a, another relatively simple uh, calculation. And all we're gonna do is um, do a date diff here. So here's what the calculation looks like. So it's the quarter since birth. So we've got our acquisition quarter. And I'll go ahead and rebuild this in here and just copy and paste it in so we can go through it. So we're just taking the date difference between the acquisition quarter and the order date, which makes sense. So there's dates in there for orders. We're just gonna say how many quarters has it been since that order or since the since the birth of the the customer okay so let me go ahead and take both of these off and now let's bring on the acquisition quarter and we'll go ahead and make that discrete and let me take this off and now let's bring on the quarter since birth to save myself a couple, a couple steps. I am going to just drag it up and I'm going to make it a discrete dimension instead of it being a continuous measure so that we have that same matrix. We're bringing it on. We're not aggregating it. And we've got um, blue pills or discrete fields. So we are building headers. Let me go ahead and make this the entire view. Okay. So now we've got the framework and let's go ahead and format our uh, date so that it matches what we want. Usually what I do is I'll click on this one and then I will change it to custom. Oops, let me go back here, do this and then click on custom so that I already have the format and I can just kind of cut this and paste it in so I don't have to remember. So now we have it in that custom date format where we've got the quarter and then the year. All right, now the next piece of this is figuring out the um, lifetime value of that customer. And maybe an easier place to start would be to actually put the number of customers associated with each of these cohorts along the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and build that out to start and then we're gonna kind of see how that uh, changes over time. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and build out the number of customers and this is gonna be fixed by the acquisition quarter, the distinct count of the customer names. Now, if you're sitting there wondering, because I did this originally, why am I using customer name? That might not necessarily be unique. For the sake of Superstore, we're gonna pretend that it is because the data is so sparse. But obviously, if you're working with real data, please use a unique identifier that represents your customer. Okay, so there's our number of customers. Let me go ahead and drag that guy on. And let's make it discrete. Okay. So we're doing good so far. We've got the number of customers here and then we've got um, our, our scaffolding of the different things. So now let's talk about what um, the lifetime value means. So first, this is what sales is and this kind of starts the numerator, but we wanna make, we wanna take it one step further. So just kind of walking through this. So these 121 customers on total, they spent together $74,448 in the first quarter. Uh, the next quarter from their birth, they spent $10,054. But what we really want to know when we get to the second quarter is not how much they spent within just that quarter, but really the sum of these two. So to add a table calculation, and let's go ahead and do the running total, and we'll specify the dimensions. So we are going to switch the order here, and we're going to restart it every acquisition quarter. Now it's gonna look kind of funny here because it's filling in these extra quarters, but we'll deal with that in a second. But right now what we're seeing is we're seeing the 74K and it's growing up to the latest order date or order, yeah, order quarter, I guess would be the way to say it for the, for the data set, which is October 1, 2019. And then we see the same thing. It starts over for Q2 2017 and it goes up. You can see we've got some repetition here because these are the same number and that kind of repeats as you go down. So we'll take care of that in a minute. So that's gonna formulate our numerator and then our denominator is gonna be pretty darn simple. It's going to be that um, same level of detail expression that we had before. 
So we're gonna take the max basically of this guy right here. I like to do maxes um, when I'm using level of detail expressions to make sure there's no over aggregation. You could use min, you could use average. I would just stick with a convention. I would avoid some in this scenario. So now I'm going to take CLV and let's replace it. Okay, now perfect. Now we have exactly what we're looking for. We have that matrix where we've got numbers. They're increasing every month, which makes sense. The um, average lifetime value is increasing. And then you can see these two gaps in there. Let me go ahead and uh, drop that on color. I'm holding down my control key so that both of them happen at the same time. And let me change this to a square. And let's go ahead and adjust our colors. I think I told you to use uh, color brewer blue, purple, green. Perfect, that looks about right. And then um, this is getting close to the uh, solution, at least the uh, computed part. If you wanted to make this look like the final solution in addition to formatting, the other thing I would do is come in here and add a filter for this customer lifetime value and just say it's supposed to be all non-null values. What that will do is it will take all of your null values and remove them so they're no longer a part of the color legend, they're filtered out of the view. And you can see we've got the same matrix as our solution minus a few little um, spots here. Before we finish up this, the next thing I wanna do is bring back on our number of customers. Before I do that to make sure it doesn't break the view, let's go ahead and convert it to discrete and we'll set the default aggregation to max. And then we can go ahead and bring that on. Perfect. And now you can see that we have the total number of customers for each section. And this is really uh, the foundation of the solution in general. You can obviously resize some things to make sure that everything is in the view. Now we get to the advanced part, which is taking care of these gaps. And instead of um, building out the calculations, I'm just going to show you the final product and then talk through them. So here is the exact solution. And the only other things that have been added on are just formatting, which was very simple in here in tooltips. You can see the tooltips. There's nothing fancy in here. It's just um, the acquisition quarter, that lifetime value amount, and then some of these other components. <clears throat> and this is exactly what our initial calculation was, the CLTV basic. Um, so for the CLTV advance, I'm gonna go ahead and go through this. <clears throat> now this thing looks gnarly, and it's the same idea repeated many times. First, I wanna focus, um, I wanna avoid this if section at the top and focus right here. So in this situation of, let's go to quarter two, 2019, what we would normally see here is a null. There's no data there. And what that means is, is nobody that uh, was Q2 2019 purchased something one quarter after their birth. So what we're doing to basically fill in that gap is say, okay, that's fine. If it's null, so if this value is null, there's that running sum. So if the running sum of sales is null, then you know what? Look one to the left instead. So now instead of saying it's null, I don't know what to do. It's gonna look up the 32. And then the same thing happens on the bottom. You know, again, if there's nothing there, cause there's really no data to fill in this hole. If there's nothing there, then just look to your left. And this is nice. It kind of adds some recursion because you'd always be looking one left and then you need to look two left essentially, or if this one were blank, you would look back because, but, and if this one were blank, it would look back. And so eventually you'd get to the beginning and it would say, yep, there's a 32. This would be a 32. And in theory, if this were blank, it would be a 32. So that's all this is doing, this, this section right here, is it's looking back. And let me actually comment these out so you can see a couple other things that we do uh, in here. Okay, so this is what this guy looks like. And this is kind of where another little uh, wrinkle comes into place. You can see that for all of those where there's less than 15 quarters, it's adding an extra quarter to the right of everything. And that makes sense because technically it can because it's looking one to the left. So to adjust this, <clears throat> that's what the secondary condition is, is it's basically requiring that the difference in the number of quarters is 
less than however many months, the most months it could be from the latest data date. Now, ideally you would put this as maybe like a max LOD. I just told, chose to hard code it for the sake of the challenge, but this is the latest quarter in the data set. In reality, you'd probably do today truncated to the quarter. So all this is now doing is saying, okay, make sure that if this is null, that it also meets this condition. And that will eliminate all of those extra gaps there and will only fill in places basically that are not the last value because the last value doesn't need to be filled in. There has, isn't anything that's happened there most likely. And that's it. That's all you need to do to get to the kind of level two solution. It's actually quite nice to do that level two solution and the lookup, lookup function is quite useful, especially because it is a table calculation. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is I did do this differently, two different ways. Uh, when I originally built the uh, number of customers level of detail expression, when I put it on <clears throat> my viz, <clears throat> when I put it on my viz, it, it broke. Um, it, it ended up with two different lines there instead of one. So if that happens to you, there's another way you can do the number of customers, and that would be to, instead of using a level of detail expression, use a table calculation. So now um, the, the nice thing about this is we're aggregating it to one result. So if we take the window max of the max here, which is just basically saying, okay, look at all the counties of customers by month, and they're all technically already this, or by quarter, they're all already the same. They're all 121, but instead of just returning what that is is a basic dimension or anything else or, or, or a maximum by itself. Just look across the entire table and return the window max back. So this can be a nice way if you ended up with uh, two rows of data, one would be like a null um, to rationalize that and get it solved. And that does it. I hope you enjoyed the solution video and uh, working with one of hopefully many to come customer lifetime and value matrices to help uh, understand your customers purchasing habits over time. Thanks guys.